Ugh, you guys don't even know what it's like having Robbie the Degenerate in your text every day. Oh my goodness. You guys don't that, even know. That, that just makes it worse. You, it just makes that it just worse. That just makes it worse. I, I wasn't like I wasn't having a bad enough weekend as it was. Yeah, it, as if as if it couldn't get worse. I have to hear. You know, like we we did a bit oh, last oh, week. Wait, what does he say? Oh, we shouldn't have taken Waddle playing the the same old hits. He wanted Soul. What what is Soul gonna do for this team? I don't know. Exactly. So maybe shut not, up, Robbie. Maybe not get a penalty. <laughs> You're just mad. You're just mad in general. Like you just get extra mad at Robbie, but you're just mad in general. I haven't spoken to Robbie since he's left here. Sue, and I'm the only thing Sue would have been able to do yesterday to help the Dolphins is recover the fumble. He sends after me after it bounced off of Gasecki. This is what he sends me. He sends me a screenshot of Tankathon.com, which shows the Dolphins' uh, number three overall pick going to the Eagles, which is kind of ironic if you think about it, because they basically had the Texans thing happen to them. This is Robbie um, or Zach Duarte? No, this is Robbie. This is Robbie. Uh, and the Dolphins pick right now is at 13. And so he goes and texts, definitely worth four catches and 29 yards. Then he sends uh, me, he also sends me a screenshot of Tua's yards per attempt or yards per throw. It was 5.4. I think it ended up lower than that. And he goes, he just circles it and goes, before the garbage time stat puff comes. Which, by the way, I'm pretty sure he texted me this like with a minute left. Like, What did he think? He was going to throw a 99-yard pass? Of course not. The Dolphins decide, well, hey, let's throw a check down to Miles Gaskin. I, I got to I gotta tell you, and, yep. and, and that last pass for minus three yards did not help. <laughs> uh, he also texts, Tua sucks. I love him. But all the constant Tua defenders will constantly move the bar and make excuses for him. Now, I did agree with him. I thought Tua stunk yesterday. I didn't think he was anything. I didn't, I didn't think he was great. And by the way, I mean, much like this team, he is awful against the Bills. I mean, they – they uh, he, now, one of them, they actually you know broke him in half. Yeah, they almost killed him. But he has had two of his worst performances against the Bills. I mean, he is it – was, it, wasn't, it wasn't a great game by Tua yesterday by any means. And certainly seeing the uh, – disorganization of the team like you know you would have liked a quarterback to be able to settle down some of those issues but you know <laughs> it's it's one of these things where it already feels like his Dolphins tenure is coming to an end whenever this whole Deshaun Watson thing comes to an end he's definitely not going to be here um and you know yesterday this report comes out because you know Florio hasn't gotten his uh his, his weekly Deshaun Watson report. In. But this one was actually interesting to me. This one was actually interesting to me. So, according to Mike Florio, Florio, he says, a week ago, the Texans and Dolphins were closing in on a deal for quarterback Deshaun Watson per multiple sources. The Dolphins wanted Watson to settle his 22 civil lawsuits accusing him of sexual misconduct during massage therapy sessions. Per multiple sources... Once the Texans caught wind of the growing possibility that the 22 civil lawsuits would be settled, their price for Deshaun Watson went up. So the Dolphins tried to pull a fast one, according to Florio. They said, hey, 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 Watson, let's make this go away, huh? Let's make this go away. We almost got him on the ropes for two first-round picks. And then the Texans got wind of this somehow, according to Florio, and they says, hold up, hold up. Like Teddy Long coming out in the middle of SmackDown. Hold on, player. Yeah, just like it's like. Wait a minute, they're doing what? I, uh, you, uh, hey, uh, you guys hear about this? Uh, Watson's about to settle. What? I just about to agree to a two two first round picks. Says with no deal ever in place, and the Dolphins would concede that a deal has never been reached. The Texans were free to ask for more if they sensed the Dolphins would be getting Watson with one of the major branches of the legal portfolio resolved. He also has 10 pending criminal complaints that will remain in place until a grand jury decides whether to charge Deshaun Watson. So that's uh, that's the latest with that. The trade deadline. Now, the trade deadline is Wednesday. Uh, according to the CBS broadcasters, Brian Flores said he was going to be relieved once the trade deadline was over. Now, I know that he said on Friday, uh, he's been doing this is his line two is our quarterback, two is our quarterback, two is our quarterback. Uh, but he said that on Wednesday, he's going to be relieved. Once the uh, the deals are, I still don't think they're going to deal for him. I still think that 
we're going to get to the end of the season and Tua Tungavailoa is is going to finish the year with, as the Dolphins QB. And then they're going to probably move on from him in some way because they've clearly been they've been putting in every single if this coaching staff is going to be here that they're ready to move on from him. Like they're rats off a ship. It's clear. Do you not get the feeling that the staff and this organization is rats off a ship on him? I I don't know if I get that feeling as much as I get the feeling of the offensive struggles as a whole. And it would be easy to just put it, you know, all on the quarterback, although he's playing his role in it. But I just think there's no – look, you can pretty much go to any NFL team and and say what type of offense they are, what they do, right? And the Dolphins' offense looks like they just running plays. You know what I mean? It, there, there's no rhyme or reason. You don't. I don't ever see them setting up other stuff during the course of the game to where, okay, you start running a sweep, 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 then you run a counter. None of that. I don't. I don't see. You know. A an offense that builds on what is done earlier in the game. So where Tua at times is not great, they're not doing anybody on that offense any favors by what they're actually doing. And the times that the offense does certain things well, they don't build on it during the course of the game. Here's a t- because when you when you run that first series and you see the things that you have success with, you should have one or two plays out of different formations off of that same set with the same type of play that you can go to in future um, uh, series where you you give the appearance that you're running that same play you had success on. The defense is like, oh, you're not getting that over on us again, player. And then it's something else. That's how you build offense. And and it doesn't it doesn't ever look like they are building on the success they had in that first drive. Because the first drive is scripted. So that means no coaches got to no, we do know nothing. they're gonna yeah, we know they're good on the first drive. That's that's their thing. That's their thing. Uh here's two uh talking about the plays. Well, I don't think I, I have to do anything beyond the, the means of what, you know, the play gives me. So you know, I'm not going to go out there and try to be a hero every play. You know, if the, the play tells me to hand the ball off, that's what I'm going to do. If the play tells me to read, you know, defender, that's what I'm going to do. Man. Swell. Um, that, that message right there says more to me than it maybe does to you guys. Tell me. Because when you think of a a quarterback talking about what they're doing offensively, the only times they say, hey, that's the play they sent in, is when they're frustrated and it's a bunch of crap. When a quarterback has had success in an offense and it doesn't work, Normally they go into it like we need to to find a better way to do this or I got to push the ball down the field more or that because, you know, I had some some opportunities The the whole conversation is a little different. Whenever you hear a player. Go into a press conference and say. I'm just doing what the coach is telling me to do the play that's being called both offensively and defensively. Yeah, it's putting it on the coaching staff. Right. Well, not necessarily putting it on the coaching staff, but as a player, you don't want to be held accountable for the circumstance in which you're asked to play under. And so if their main goal this year is to get to get the ball out of to his hands quickly, right? And they're running all these short routes and all these, you know, these, you know, uh, short comebacks and, and swing passes and hitches and all these things, right? And then you go to Tua and ask him, why aren't you pushing the ball down the field more? 
It's like, you know. And so from that standpoint, um, you can always tell the relationship between the player and the coaching staff based on how they answer that question. But like that's the funny thing is like, man, are they going to really – if this season does end up going the way that it's going, which is just awful, second time that this regime has been 1-7, and seven. one of them was supposed to be part of a rebuild. Usually those rebuilds are supposed to be rare, ready and raring to go by year three. They're back right where they started from when people were saying that the Dolphins were risking people's health. So, And the only p- people's health they seem to be risking is the stress rate of Dolphin fans. That's whose health they're risking right and now. And two. And two, yeah. Well, yes. Yes, yeah, well, it, that's already been proven. Yeah, well, Joseph yes, broke him in half. They, they they got him broken half. But listen, uh, it you know will Stephen Ross who who had a great weekend. I mean, you know, Michigan lost to Michigan State. So imagine imagine caring about Michigan as much as Leroy did when he started the show on a tirade. Hey man, you just got to you just what are you doing? Just, kicking and, a man while he's down. I'm just, I'm just saying. Right. Well, I'm not what kicking you, you while you're down. I'm not kicking while you're down. But imagine yes, you are. I'm not. But imagine. Stephen Sneaky Ross. Shade. That's what that is. Imagine Stephen Ross Yo, having SS Tobin. That on shade Tobin. Imagine having that on Saturday, and then on Sunday, your football team loses again. Your, your the one you own loses like that again. It's I mean, what do you have? The worst weekend ever. But listen, worry about that, you know, because the Heat. They're Even a worse than mine because the Browns lost to the Steelers. Oh yeah, you had a you had a rough one, buddy. But Minnesota lost to Trevor Simeon. No, Minnesota lost to Cooper. Cooper, Cooper, that's I got it mixed up. Yeah, Cooper's the redhead, dude. Intangibles, I got you. By the way, the doll. <laughs> by the by the way, the Dolphins were were carved up by intangibles yesterday. Cole Beasley couldn't so, be stopped. That social distancing. Social distancing. Nobody want. He anti vax The Dolphins were anti tackle. Steven Ross. Stupid binoculars. Yeah, where were his binoculars yesterday? To- oh, the, uh, the Heat. They're a different organization since LeBron left. Yeah, but you're the same, aren't you? Oh, they've got. Oh, 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 they're a different one? Tell me, Steve, please. Just look at our, you know, our sales and, and how the fans are responding to that and the excitement, you know? Um, I, I think, you know, the dog and the heat, I think, is a different organization now that LeBron James isn't there. Um, and I think the Dolphins are a, t- a team that, you know, is kind of capturing the imagination of the whole entire, you know, fan base here in, in South Florida. Yeah, dude, you capture our imagination, all right? You capture our nightmares. May I ask, what excitement was he talking about? Because I'm pretty sure the year that LeBron this was, left. Uh, this was 2015, so this would have been. Well, th- well LeBron year, left 2014, right? LeBron left 2014, and then this was, I think, Joe Philbin's second year going in. So the year after Hard Knocks, I think, is what this was. I, I think. Now that I relive this, you hired a coach that wasn't even a coach. Nope. I like he should have been fired for lying on his um application. You were not an offensive coordinator. That's what we were sold, right? Yes. Were we not did we not think Joe Filmer was the offensive coordinator? The queasy guy. Then when we then when he actually started coaching, we did research. You wanna know what the Dolphins went in twenty fifteen? Please. Six and ten. Oh. And the excitement was after... And Joe Philbin got fired. Yes, he got fired that year. And the excitement was coming off an 8-8 eight and eight year. Right. So right. much. 8-8 eight right. eight has been my life with this team. Right. Right. Different different organization. Different organization. The Heat. Heat who have gone to the finals. They land you... They, they, they never disappoint you. You know, they're always, they're always going and they're going to try their hardest. They're always going to... They're always going to excite you with new players. Never tank, never rebuild, never get a bunch of draft picks. Don't try and process. And when they do get draft picks, they hit on them. When they get free agents like Jimmy Butler, they hit. They're not fat cats. But the Dolphins, the Dolphins are capturing the imagination. Holy crap. I literally crap. got a headache this morning. Holy crap. The I thought I was done. Them. No, you're not done. You're not done. I, like, I... Uh, no, because in three weeks, the Michigan plays Ohio State. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Well, maybe you'll win that one. Shut up! <laughs>
Zonk, my guy, number one Twitter follow, <laughs> he says, sad time for hashtag Miami Dolphin fans. Hoping for better days ahead, but it seems obvious it's time to get back to basics and revisit the drawing board. Hashtag MIA versus BUF. That's Miami versus Buff, Buffalo. Hashtag total rebuild. No fins. Zonk is done. No, no fins up. No hashtag fins up from Zonk. Hashtag total rebuild. Larry Zonka. That's other ship. They broke him. They broke him. You wow. broke a, a man who couldn't be broken by anybody. An iron will. Larry Zonka. He's had enough. He's had enough. Jason Taylor yesterday, beside himself after the game, or uh, as the game winds down. I just don't understand it. I'm- I don't understand it, Jason. Can you give me Jason Taylor again yesterday? If you guys missed it, this is as the game is out of hand. All right, it's over. Minute left. Dolphins get the ball, football back one more time for bleeps and giggles. And they give a little three-yard dunk to Miles Gass, who gets tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Jason Taylor doesn't understand. To a screen pass out to Gaskin. Gaskin wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. He loses two. If, if you're going to run a play here in this situation, you're, there's a minute left. Obviously, you've lost the game. If you're going to run a play, that's, that's the play you run? If you're, just, if you're just trying to get out of here, turn around and hand the ball off or take a knee. But yeah. that's the play you run? You run a play for a three-yard loss? 45 seconds left. The ball uh, at the Dolphin 23. They hand it to Gaskin. And he gets out close to the 30. You're right about that, Jason. I just don't understand it. I mean, no. it, 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 there's one or two things you do here. You either take a knee yeah. and go home right. without getting anybody hurt, or you run the football twice and go home with no timeouts. But to motion your back out of the backfield to an empty set, and then throw a bubble to your running back for a three-yard loss. Right. Makes no sense. Like, what, what, what is that? Man. Even Joe's in the background. He's like, it makes no sense. And Joe's out. Joe's packing up. That's why you hear him off mic. <laughs> 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 Joe's, so, Joe's so annoyed that he didn't come into work today. <laughs> Joe's out of here. He's like, what do, what do I got to do this for? Jason, you're the young blood now. You sit there. You take it. I've taken enough of this. Jason, I just don't understand it. None of us do, Jason. It's 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 a marvel. It's a marvel. It's a cursed friend. Jordan Howard yesterday, lighting it up. Lighting it up. Anybody who gets out of here, greener pastures. I Jeez. just don't understand it. I'm- it's just how it is how it is, man. It's crazy. You got your legends f- figuring this out. I used to see this with the Canes all the time. We'd see Joaquin Gonzalez. Or Romberg, or Ed Reed. Joaquin's pretty broken. Or or they Vilma. Broken him. We we've had our we've had Kane's legends. They've come out the wazoo year after year. Fix the U. The U. Whatever. We've seen that. I don't. I haven't seen this. Dolphins legends. Finally enough. Finally enough. You know. Imagine if you got Dan Marino honestly on the record right now. You know. I'm not talking about Twinkle Dan. Dan, who's trying to apologize for Tua for them failing him. I'm talking about if you got Dan Marino unfiltered, you know, like Dan Marino in that in that uh, in that in that inside Oopie. the NFL. Oh, yeah, or or send it in that kind of Dan Marino. Imagine you got him, that guy. What kind of interview he would give? Because this is crazy. the 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 pillars of this franchise are sick. The fans are sick. And what are we sitting here? They're about to trade everybody. Xavier and Howard, <laughs> Peter King saying they're taking offers. Reportedly, Devontae Parker trading him. Nice of him to show up though yesterday, although awful drop late. Um, you know, what do we say, Leroy? What do you say to the people? What's what's left? <clears throat> you're you're looking up, <clears throat> Leroy. Think about this. You're looking up at the mother bleeping Jets in the standings. The Jets. Here's what I would say, and the same goes. For Manny Diaz, as I've said, it gets to the it gets to the point where you're at you're you're at the point in just your franchise where don't make promises. 
just go out and perform. And I know you want to give fans hope, and I know you want to, but the one thing that's worse than hope is false hope. Um, I also want somebody in the organization who is going to make the best put football decision and not give a damn what everybody around him thinks. Okay? Because there's a lot of decisions that have been made that aren't necessarily good football decisions. For example, if I think about them drafting Noah Igbenogany, when clearly you needed a running back, when clearly you needed a couple of other things, and you supposedly use the exa- use the excuse, you can never have too many DBs. Well, you can always you can never have too many pass rushes either. Oh, they don't they didn't get any pressure yesterday. Right. Any pressure. But that's my point. If from a football perspective, if I have a choice to take a pass rusher or a DB, I can have an average DB with an above average pass rush, and that average DB will look good. I think Jalen Phillips. But is- I can have a good DB with an average pass rush, and that DB look better. I feel like Jalen Phillips spends all of his game just stuck in a guard's belly. It's awful, man. It's awful. And, and here's the other thing. I don't know if I would feel as bad if they had selected the same positions but picked better guys at those positions. Well, that's the thing that makes you feel bad is that you right. see guys picked around the same area right? and were available, whether they would have held onto their picks and not traded down or whatever. You know what I would like to know? Or guys taken Here's later. And what ended up happening is they screwed up in their evaluation. Here's what I would like to know. I would like to know the explanation behind these picks. Not for any other reason than know this. If you're the owner and you can sit the people that are making these decisions in front of you, And say, why did we pick this guy? Why did we pick this guy? And you hear the explanation. Then it would be very easy to tell, well, the problem with this whole situation is, is our talent evaluation is way off. Not the accumulation of picks, not the position in which we found ourselves in the last two years drafts, but decisions made with those picks. And you got to make a move. You got to move in another direction because you can't have the same people picking players like this. Can I tell you, you something? can't. Can, can we just stop for a second and think about how crazy it is that OJ Simpson <laughs> had himself a better football Sunday than anybody at Bills Dolphins? Now, here's the ju- what's amazing the juice. Was at Bills Dolphins telling you, hey, Twitter world, it's yours truly. He's getting ovations from the fans. What was the incredible part about this? The incredible part to me was that he was at a Bills game. Yeah. Not any of all the other stuff. I'm like, huh. Okay. Not only at a Bills game, but looks like he was a guest of the team. Right, because he's sitting, wearing, in, he, sitting in the highfalutin. He looks like he's in. He's got a credential on of some sort. That's what I was looking at. He was sitting what I like to call the highfalutin. Yeah, get rid of that guy. He is. Uh, f- so Juice, he gets to go Sunday and have himself a, a grand old time, and Jason Taylor is sitting here questioning life. This is what we've done. Juice, great Sunday. That's what they're doing for their football legends. 
who maybe appropriately or inappropriately shouldn't be at that game. And Jason Taylor is sitting here questioning life, thinking to himself, I, I just don't understand. I just don't understand. And I don't, and, have, an- I don't have answers and, for him. It's pretty amazing that that dude is speechless about what he's watching on his former team. Yep. Jason. I just don't understand it. I'm-, I'm sorry, Jason. Take a break. And, and hmm? he's a defensive player. Hmm? Which makes it even worse.